Well, good morning, church, and welcome to our midweek devotion. Um, yeah, I really enjoy doing this. It's an opportunity for me to, to come to you all, spend some time in prayer, spend some time reflecting on Scripture. Um, and just, I know that we're reaching more than, than just those people who we see here on a Sunday. There's people all over the world that I know are able to see this because it's on Facebook and on YouTube. And so it just, it goes to show how important that mission is of, of spreading God's word and doing it in whatever ways we can. Um, so again, I, I love this opportunity. I love that we have the technology to do this uh, and that we are able to reach so many um, in thinking of that, and in thinking about the fact that this past week was our World Mission Sunday, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one Sunday in the entire church year that we set aside to remember those world missions. But really, that should be something we're doing more often, far more often. Um, but I, I do want to use the prayer that is set aside for World Mission Sunday this morning as we begin our time together. So pray with me. Almighty God, through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you revealed the way of eternal life to every race and nation. Pour out this gift anew that by, pre by the preaching of the gospel, your salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And again, just knowing that when we preach the gospel, you know, our, our intentional relationships are with those who we are, are close to, who we physically are near, um, who we communicate with often. But, but our words, they travel much farther now than they ever have before. They travel um, you know, across oceans, through cyberspace, into the realms of the World Wide Web and all over. And so our preaching of the gospel is, is being watched and being heard all over the world. Um, this morning as I was looking at the reading set aside for today, Psalm 103 was the, the psalm set aside for this morning. And it's, it's one that, again, there's a song that goes to it that's sung. It's probably a familiar tune. Um, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Um, that's how Psalm 103 begins. And of course, it goes on for, for 22 verses. But I know that that refrain of bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me is a familiar tune and one that, that we sing in the church. That psalm goes on to talk about how God forgives all of our iniquities. He forgives and heals all of the things within us that are not good. All of, he, re, he redeems our lives from the pit. He crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. Uh, and it's just, it's a very uplifting psalm. It's one of the ones that David wrote. Um, but it goes on and it says uh, about halfway through, he does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. In essence, it's saying, you know, God doesn't give us what we deserve because we don't deserve much. We, we really deserve very little because of the sin, the iniquities in our lives. Um, and, and it goes on from there to say, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Folks, having traveled um, by plane, by you know, sailing ship, um, across the Atlantic Ocean numerous times, I can tell you the east is pretty far from the west. Um, I've, I've gone the other route as well, uh, going towards Asia. And, and again, there are some long, long flights. And so to think about that distance from the east to the west, I mean, I realize that's a metaphor, but, but God is, is taking that sin and he's putting it that far away from us with the forgiveness and the love he shows us. He's saying, that doesn't matter. You are here with me. The next line in this Psalm, in Psalm 103, this is at verse 13. It says, as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. As a father, it's, it's interesting to think about that showing compassion. You know, I'm, I'm dealing with two three-year-old toddlers right now uh, who have decided that going to bed at night or you know, mid-afternoon for their nap is something they don't really wanna do anymore. How do you show compassion to them uh, in that instance, when they are for an hour jumping around their room, playing, not doing what they're supposed to do. And of course we go in over and over again and, and tell them to stop. We 
make those empty threats that parents make. Sometimes we follow through on those. Uh, eventually, I, I sat down on the floor of their room, or Trisha sat down on the floor of their room and just tried to keep them in their beds until they finally rest. Where is the compassion in that? You know, I, I think I know what's best for my children. I know they need rest. Um, and so the compassion, of course, sometimes is in giving them that discipline. Uh, sometimes it's in just that waiting patiently. But I struggle with that. I struggle with that because, you know, I want to go on with my day. I want to do, you know, the things I do in the evening, watch Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy or, or whatever it is, you know, have a drink, have dinner with Trish. But I, I don't always get to do that in the time I want to do that because of being a father and having to show that compassion to those children. And as frustrated as I get with the two of them, Mary Margaret's really good about sleeping right now, so she's not an issue yet, but with, with Hank and Huck, the frustration I have in that sometimes, I just think, how does God do that for the whole world? How does he show that compassion for each and every one of us? Because I guarantee you that the issues we give him to deal with, the issues that, that we have in our lives that we place before God, and even those we don't place before God, they're far greater than a couple of toddlers going to bed at night or taking a nap. Um, so as I was reading this and thinking about that father showing compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him, it really hit me. It really hit me how much God loves us and how much it means. And, and so going back to that opening line, which is how this psalm ends as well, bless the Lord, all his works and all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord with all that is within me. That is what we are called to do. Uh, the more we do that, the more we, we bless him with our lives, of course, the easier something like world missions becomes because it just radiates out of us. We share that love with all we encounter, whether it be right here in our community or whether it be while we're traveling, whether it be when we intentionally go somewhere to spread his word. And so just again, and thinking about that father's compassion and thinking about the, the, how far he takes us from our sins and how much he does for us, we are, we are called to then share that with others as well. So again, Psalm 103 just really spoke to me this morning. I hope it does to you as well. I would encourage you to go and, uh, and read all of Psalm 103 and just sing those praises to the Lord. Bless him with your entire life, with your whole soul. Well, I do have a couple other announcements for you this morning. This is um, the last Wednesday before Lent begins. Lent will begin next Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. Um, and we will have two services that day. We'll have a noonday said service with the imposition of ashes. Uh, and then we will also have a 6 p.m. service with the choir, uh, also with the imposition of ashes. And after that noonday service, I'm going to hang out outside the church for a while. So if you watch that one online um, but still want to come and receive the ashes, I'll be there and I will come to your car and I can do it just through your, the window of your car. Um, I would encourage you to watch the service first. Um, but I understand if you're at work or whatever, you know, if you're just coming by on your lunch break and you just want to receive the ashes, please come by and do that. So that'll be available uh, next Wednesday um, after the noonday service until about 2 o'clock or so. Um, and then we'll have the 6 p.m. service as well. Um, when Lent begins, we have ordered uh, Steadfast Love. And this is a, a series of devotions that are uh, inspiration from Henry Nguyen. And Henry Nguyen... Um, He's kind of the father of pastoral care. He's done so much um, in, in the Anglican Church in regards to pastoral care and has written a lot. And so this book, uh, this little devotion book, um, gives you kind of just a paragraph or so for each day, a scripture passage to reflect on, and then a short prayer as well. And this would be a, a great Lenten discipline. We're going to have these at the church. It's called Steadfast Love. Um, you can pick these up, uh, and it'll just be a, a Great way for you to start or end your day during Lent as, as one of those Lenten disciplines that people often take on. Something else that we're going to do during Lent, um, my, the Wednesday video series is going to um, be a little different. So Ash Wednesday will be a regular video, and then for the five Wednesdays after that, before Palm Sunday, uh, I'm going to be focusing on this book here. I realize it's kind of hard to see. It's called To the Cross. It's written by Christopher Wright. Um, and it's a five chapter book. Each chapter is about 20 pages and it reflects on just a short section of scripture um, in the last 24 hours of Jesus' life before he's crucified. 
Um, so it goes from basically the upper room when Jesus has the last supper with his disciples through to when he dies on Calvary. Um, and so it's that kind of 24 hour span um, that we'll remember during Holy Week, but in the five weeks leading up to Holy Week, we're gonna touch on, on a chapter from this book. So our Wednesday morning videos might be a little bit longer as we reflect on a chapter. I'm gonna try and kind of give you a summary and then a little bit more beyond that um, for each chapter. And I will make sure that either in, in the description below next week's video, um, you can see what the scripture passages are gonna be so you can be reading ahead. I'm also gonna put a link if you want to buy a copy of this book, it's about 10 bucks. Um, you can get it on Amazon, uh, you can get it used for even cheaper, Thrift Books has it used, um, but InterVarsity Press is, is uh, who put it out, IVP, I'll put a link to the IVP site um, so that if you want to find this book, you can find it there as well. Again, it's To the Cross by Christopher Wright. Um, and something else we're gonna do, there's been a Lenten series traditionally during Lent, a Lenten luncheon series, and of course there have been Wednesday night events throughout the year at St. Jude's. With the COVID-19 pandemic, all of that's been put on hold. Um, but Lent is such an important time of year for us as we prepare for the Easter season, as we prepare for Christ's resurrection. Uh, so twice during those five weeks, we're gonna gather um, either here at the church or over at the rectory, we're gonna find a place where we can safely gather in a casual setting uh, and, and we can just kind of have discussion on this book. So, so two weeks in on March 3rd, um, that's the plan. And then again, a few weeks later on March 24th. Um, more details will follow. I don't have them all worked out yet, but I thought let's get together a couple times during Lent. Let's spend some time reflecting on what this season is and what it means, and let's spend some time talking about those last 24 hours of Jesus' life as we see uh, in this book. Um, and like I said, it'll be a casual setting. Uh, if, if we're here at the church, we'll meet in Scarden Hall so that we can spread out. If we're over at the rectory, we'll weather dependent, sit around the front yard, we'll bring some lawn chairs, maybe get a fire going. Um, but I want it to be casual, I want it to be open discussion. I want you to know that I'm not gonna have all the answers, but it's a great time for us to just get together and, and talk and enjoy some fellowship uh, based around studying his word. So I look forward to, to both of those. You'll, you'll be able to find um, some reflections as well from this book on our Facebook page. I'm gonna try and put something up about that. And of course, the video series, the Wednesday video series during Lent will reflect on this. So I look forward to, to doing that with you all. Um, I wanna close in prayer. This is a colic set aside for this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday is is... The Transfiguration, it's when Christ, when Jesus went up on the hill with Peter, James, and John and revealed himself to them in all of his glory um, prior to the resurrection. And it's such a cool, um, a cool holiday, I guess, a cool um, day in the church, feast day that we remember. And of course, we'll, we'll be reading the scripture passages for, uh, that talk about that this Sunday. Um, and we'll be preaching on that as well. But I wanted to go ahead and, and say that prayer because as, as Jesus reveals himself to each of us in epiphany, as we've been praying for those kinds of revelations that, that God would speak to us um, as he did the wise men and, and how he revealed himself to the Gentiles in epiphany, I thought, you know, that ends right here with the transfiguration leading into Lent. Um, and, and so we see his divine glory here in the transfiguration and we see it again throughout Lent as we build up to Easter when he's resurrected. And of course, that's when all of his power just truly comes and we see it and he overcame death and, and is raised from the dead. So let's say this prayer now. O oh God, who before the passion of your only begotten son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant that we beholding by faith the light of his countenance may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.